But Yamamoto uh, is the man. Like for being a 24 year old guy, first year in the big leagues, not speaking the language, his confidence is, and it's not like an arrogance. It's very much like he's comfortable in his skin. Let's bring in our first guest of the day on FT Live, Tyler Glass, now from the Los Angeles Dodgers, joining us right now. Tyler, great to see you, dude. Yeah. We'll get into the Toronto series and how much fun you guys had out there. Got to start here. Did you see the memo from the union about the jerseys getting fixed? And are you excited that they're going to actually work on changes? I had no idea that was even a thing. But yeah, sweet. Yeah, they're pretty bad. So <laughs> I personally like don't care a ton just because I play once a week and like I'm not really concerned with I don't know maybe it's different for a position player like sliding and there's like a lot of other elements involved but I will say they're not as good as they used to be so that's, <laughs> at least they're fixing it that's good well yeah but not so enough for a while not for you know you're gonna have to take another year until they fix it so at the end of you know starting next year maybe you'll have the right you know your pants will fit the way you want you know you're a little taller than most Hopefully. guys so maybe your shirt will fit properly next time you know Although, yeah Exactly. The way you're pitching, you might want to keep it just the way it is. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's where they used to have like those custom tailored, like you guys remember the majestic or whatever. And now it's you get like three options. Everyone kind of looks a little a little sloppy, but at least they're like addressing the issue. Maybe it'll. Did they actually say it'll be done by next year? Or is it just kind of like a what? Maybe then. They said it yeah. the latest. They said it the latest. Yeah. 2025 <laughs> is the latest. It's like a contractor. It's like yeah, one year. And then maybe a couple years down the line. <laughs> right, right. Two yeah. weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. 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 It's like construction. One other uniform question. This is about Players Weekend. Are you excited for Players Weekend to return? And are you bummed that you don't get to pick a fun nickname on the back of the jersey this year? I'm, I'm clearly out of the loop. I didn't know <clears throat> that uh, we couldn't pick names. I thought that's what the Player Weekend was. Is it just like you can wear whatever you want and that type of thing? Or no. What it, is it? I don't, it's, I don't know. They took the fun meter <laughs> and they, they took the fun meter and they just sucked all of it out of it. They're just like, <sighs> what are the changes? What is the, cause it used to be your name. You could wear whatever like colors and everything like that. Now is it like what? You can customize cleats. So there's a fun day, okay. a charity day. And what else, Scott? Fa like a, a family day, like a thankful, thank day. thankful yeah. day, which is all cool. Yeah. I'm, all a, cool. I'm a fan of that. Yeah. yeah. But I feel like we can already customize cleats, right? I don't know. I was on the Rays, and everyone's got different cleats, and you know what I mean, like that. It's I guess it's team dependent, but yeah, that's cool. At least, yeah, you, nice. As many superstars as you have on your Dodger team, they all have special cleats. So I mean, let's let's yeah, be serious. Yeah, everyone's got some. Yeah, the unique looking ones for sure. Nobody's uh, getting some custom. Nobody's nobody's getting some stock New Balance Johns in there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I haven't seen them yet. All right. So speaking of the Rays, do have you see? Do you see the Rays City Connects that came out today? Nope. I'm clearly. Oh, I'm, this so is awesome. We are, here. Yeah, this this is, here. we are here. We are. So they. So yeah. imagine. What do you think the Rays City Connect would look like if you had to like? If you were there for a while. Like if you had to choose what they think they would look like. I would go like some sort of like palm tree element with like water and some out like elements of Florida type of thing. Maybe some tacos and some beer. Maybe not tacos. It's not. But like, yeah, some, that's like, more California. Yeah, sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like sun yeah. And, and palm trees and stuff like that. So they have like the fluorescent lettering that says Tampa Bay, and then they have palm trees, and they have, you know, it's yeah. like they have like a fluorescent green belt. So Randy can walk around like with his fluorescent green belt, and, you know, do Very the whole fitting, thing. Right? Yeah. You know, nice, and nice. it has the ray yeah, going up. I mean, it. there's, it, it's a, and it's gray, so it's like a dark gray <laughs> color. So it's like perfect for. Tampa, like what you would expect the Rays to come out with. It was like, all right, that gets it. So I, I got yeah, it. Yeah, it's cool. What's with – I see, too, like we just played the Nationals and they had their city connect. What's with – everyone's doing the Grays. Is that like the theme this year? It's like the Grays at home. It's weird. Nats did they that last nice. year. Oh, really? They have the, like yeah, okay. they have the uh, cherry blossoms on yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. sweet. I think those are cool. Yeah. Yeah, kind of sweet. The gray. Yeah, I guess the, the Mets did gray. Yeah. The Rays are gray-ish. The well, raised one is of, baller. I'm looking at it more now. And, raised and is sweet. The, the headline says skateboarding culture skateboarding. inspires Ray's City Connect, which obviously, yeah. Tyler, you're going to be a fan of that too. So you, this yeah. is the one thing. I know you're happy to be in L.A., but this is the one thing that you might get like a little bit jealous about. <laughs> I don't, yeah. 
I guess. <laughs> I, don't really, I, don't, I don't really care. I have like the least amount of swag on the field at all times. I wear like white cleats. I don't care at all. It's bad. But you got the best lettuce, so that's all that matters. True. Yeah, Thank that's you. A, Appreciate that's that. swag. That's swag. <laughs> hat hat lettuce is definitely swag. What about this weekend? How many do you think you're ever going to hear Otani get booed quite like he got booed this weekend? Probably not. I, I assumed it would happen just going to Toronto with all the stuff, but I don't know. We'll see. I guess like I, I generally, if you're a good player, you're probably going to get mood, booed more than someone who's not good. So it's kind of flattering and it's in its own way. Uh, but I, I don't, if there's anyone who doesn't care about any of that, it's probably him. So he clearly like, he's just kind of happy go lucky, like whatever it is, what it is. So it seems to not really affect him at all. What was the plan in the dugout? Did you guys boo him in the dugout for fun? What was going on there? I don't know. The first game, I wasn't even out there to start the game. I was doing treatment. Uh, and then the second game, I was pitching. So I was, I was kind of out of the loop. Clearly, I'm out of the loop on most things, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, this is good. Oh, so that's every, funny. Yeah. That's good, right? I'll read it for the crowd that just listens. Uh, Dave Roberts said Otani's teammates booed him when he got back to the dugout after the homer. Otani laughed, turned to Roberts, and said, <laughs> now we're tied. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> This is good. We're like the like the 10 15 minute catch up sesh. Like ev- here's everything yeah. you missed in baseball and in Dodgers world. So, we're here for it. But by the way, Freddie Freeman hit a homer. I like guess his, his dad, Fred, I saw was there. For like he returned yeah. to Canada for like the first time in like 30 years or something. Yeah, he was telling us when he got the fight, he said his dad was there, so that was pretty cool. I know he was pretty excited for that. He's very like a family oriented guy and then he's been looking really good recently. That swing was great. Normal, super awesome catch it out front, Freddie, and he was happy, Freddie. It was a, it was an awesome game. Happy flight too. So those are always, those are good. He, he, uh, I, I always told, I always joke with Freddie. Freddie claimed to be Canadian. I'm like, Freddie, you've never even been to Canada, bro. How, you know, you're from California. <laughs> oh, my parents, my parents. So, I mean, I yeah. know that had to mean a lot. Obviously, his mom passed away when he was like 10 years old from melanoma. Yeah. So then his dad was there. So mm-hmm. it, you know, it's pretty awesome that he got to do that back in Toronto and. You know, it's good for Freddie. I mean, Freddie, Freddie just gets all the nice things, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> it happens when you're that good. Yeah, but he was he was excited. He seemed like he had a pep in his step. It was it was a good series for him. How are the cramps going? You got hand cramps? Leg cramps? Yeah. Like, what is that? What does a hand yeah. cramp look like? Are you like, I can't yeah, get it? Up. You go back and look, I get like all clawed up and stuff. It's weird. I have to just like there's a normal protocol I do. I've had it happen before as well. I just I don't know what it is. I mean, it's like a family thing. My brother's kind of the same way. Like when he would do track and get towards the end of his decathlon, like he, something about our extremities get a little crampy, but I hadn't had it all year and I stopped doing, like I have like my normal protocol, like maybe do an IV before and then like pickle juice is the answer. It's the greatest thing ever. It's better than like drip drops and all the hydration stuff. So I just thought I was past it and I hadn't really been doing my normal thing. And now I gotta, I gotta get back on it, but it's not like a concern or anything. It's just, Annoying though when you get to play like once every six days and then I I have to come out of the game at like the last inning. It's just not a. I was pretty pissed, but now going forward, I know how to how to figure it out. How long how long did you pitch with it? Because Cliff Lee, when we played together with the Phillies, he used to get the same thing. And the one yeah. time he got taken out, it was a seventh inning. He still had like twenty more pitches he could have gone. He wanted to get a CG, and he gets taken out, and they end up you know giving up a run, and he was pissed. He's like, I'm never coming out again. So the next time he was pitching, it was July, and I go out there, and his hand is like, eh. it's like, it's like strong hand from, from the movie. And he's like, he's yeah. like, don't say a word. And he's like peeling it back in his glove, and he's like, all right, I'm fine now. Because we had, we had mound visits, so I used two or three mound visits, and he pitched yeah. the rest of the inning. He got two outs. So how long did you pitch with it? I've done, so there's been games where I've just kind of <clears throat> like an inning and a half, two innings. And sometimes it's weird. It like, it only really starts when you try to get on it. So if it's like one, two or oh, two, it'll happen. Some games it'll just happen every single pitch. But as my blood gets going or like I, I get the inning going, I can kind of get through it, but then it'll just happen randomly. So I felt it towards the end of the sixth. I probably threw to like mid, I think I had like an out. So maybe two outs of the sixth inning. And then I went inside, slammed some electrolytes stretched did a bunch of stuff and it just didn't really seem to work and then as i was warming up that inning it was worse than it was prior and i think will too knew he was looking at me like 
these warm ups are a little strange. Like you can't really, there's no push off. So it's more of like a fall. And then I'm just kind of, I don't know. It's not as like effortful. And then I thought it would loosen up as the inning went on and it didn't. And then I, I think it was pretty obvious. I was like out there trying to stretch it out in the middle of the inning. And I was already at 95 pitches. Uh, it sucks that I gave up the run, but it is what it is. I go, I'll learn from it and make sure I, I drink my pickle juice. <laughs> Yeah. So wait, that's what I want to know. What's the pickle juice? Do you like, are you like firing backs? Do you have them like lined up like shot glasses and you're like every inning you yeah, fire of. a pickle it's juice just, shot so, down or what? I had this happen in Tampa a few times and I used to just drink like a water bottle full of drip drop or whatever liquid, IV, whatever our, our hydration stuff is. And I talked to our team doctor and he was saying like, I worked it on like Iron Man's and stuff where people cramped a lot. And he's like, the best thing is if you just take a concentrated, there's companies that make like pickle juice shots, but any normal, Go to the grocery store, buy like a jar of pickles and have the pickle juice. It's just there are a lot of electrolytes. There's like magnesium and potassium. There's a bunch of stuff in pickle juice. Uh, and I guess if it's like a concentrated amount, like a two to three ounce shot, it like gets in your whatever faster and then you chase it with water. And it really did wow. work. Like that was the one thing that helped me a lot. I just didn't have it last start. I'm dumb. I should have brought what? some, but we have them at home and it works really well. What? Uh, so you like go to the grocery store and you just buy a bunch of pickles. Has anyone ever looked at you oddly because you have like... You know, like 12 big jars of pickles and nothing else and a straw and you, yeah and you go to the <laughs> checkout counter and you hand it to the lady and she's like yeah what's happening at his house tonight like i don't know this is, this is a little weird the only time i would go and get it like that at the store would be like triple a or something if i was like on a rehab start just having to go get it just in the bushes you know but now they'll have like they have companies that make it which oh. they'll have just like straight concentrated pickle juice shots and we have them at home uh, and then I usually bring them, and I just I just didn't bring them. There's a bunch of companies, like, whatever okay. whatever pickles use, it works. They're all kind what of. What happens if you don't like pickles? Mm -hmm. Fucking suck it up. Yeah, <laughs> drink some pickle <laughs> juice. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, like man, I don't really like pickles. Too bad. Here, Tyler, drink yeah. up, son. Yeah, oh, exactly. Want to be in the big leagues? It. Still bread yeah. and butter. What kind of what kind of pickle <laughs> are we talking about here? Uh, I don't know. Normal, non-sweet pickles. What are those? Just normal, that normal ass Ooh, pickles. Ew. Cucumbers that have been pickled. <laughs> yes. I don't like just pickles. A, yeah, I love pickles. I love pickles. I, don't, I, don't, oh, you do. I do too, but I, I do. But it's just like thinking about. Just, I mean, I like pickles because like, you know the crunchiness and like the taste. Yep. Then like just drinking the, just drinking the. Oh, I don't know if I can. Did know. you ever do like in in college or whatever when you were in the mileage? You ever do like pickleback shots? It's like it's a cure for everything. You've yeah. never done that where like no I have day, sadly. Take, like, yeah it, it's it's a nice little it gets rid of all what, the the taste what is it called pickleback you never had a pickleback no oh. you have a it's shot and then you go pickle then you chase it with pickle juice yeah it's like for when you're in college and like you hate the taste of alcohol I love, and it's just like it completely washes it out i love how mm -hmm. glass was like Remember when you guys were in college or like the minor yeah, leagues? Like that never happens in the big leagues. Like guys never <laughs> party in the big leagues. <laughs> it's honestly, I'm I'm sure you know, like it's so much different than it was back in the day. And I was only in the big leagues in like 2016, 17, but it's definitely not the same culture as it used to be. Like people don't really, drinking is not like a thing anymore. Every now and again on the flights, but it's not like it used to be. I'll hear stories from people back in the day and I'm like, times have certainly changed. It's much different. Mm -hmm. They don't even have, they don't even supply alcohol in the clubhouses, do they anymore? Some of them. I know they don't. It's hit or miss. On like the road, they're usually there. It's just not like probably in the back. Some it's places do, some places it don't. Yeah, exactly. And I, I also know MLB, there's like a rule at home clubhouses. You can't have any alcohol. Uh, but on the on the road, it's still pretty normal. And then like on flights and stuff, it's there. Yeah. I remember they started taking it away. Yeah. It Makes like, sense. It was I a mean, no-no. That's playing to what you're saying. That's one of the top questions that I'll get, Tyler. Be like, what what do major league players do for fun? I'm like, well, they usually go out late and go drinking, and, yeah. and they can show up to the park. Obviously, it's still plenty of time. You're still six hours early, but like you could wake up at 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. Now, video games, chilling yeah. at home, like that. It's it's so right funny now. You go to the game. field and you're like, people's eyes are all like bagging a bloodshot, and you're like, is that is it alcohol or video games? And it's always a it's like. The same type of recovery the other day. It's like, I was up till four. It's like, damn, times have definitely changed. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. Well, most teams like it, though, like front offices and teams and all that, because you're not out. You're in. Right. You know? Yeah. Better alternative, for sure. Yeah. Well, when you were at the exactly. Pirates, when you were at the Pirates, they tried to give you guys watches so they could tell how much sleep you were getting and how, what time you were getting in so they could track you. 
Yeah, well, we didn't have a choice in the minor leagues. Like when we were in Pirate City, when you're young, you do the uh, like we have to stay on site at the dorm, and everything like the key cards were time stamped. There was cameras everywhere, stuff like that. I guess to prison. keep us out of trouble. I don't know what it was. Yeah, it was a little bit. Of, it had a vibe of prison a little bit. Uh, clearly not the same, but it was a little weird just being in a pro ball and having to do all that. And then, yeah, I think I, I don't know if yeah. And then later, like the whole watch thing, I I believe it was more of like a recovery thing. But I also think it was probably convenient that it, it tracked you as well. I never wore it, so I never looked into it. <laughs> 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 good you're better off for it they don't know all the info about you i'm t- thinking about taking yeah. my watch off now yeah they clearly <laughs> don't know all the info they traded him they clearly don't didn't know all the info <laughs> about... big swing and a miss hey how is it being in la though like we haven't spoke i think we spoke to you right before the season so how is it mm-hmm. being in los angeles now like you're in your home state and you're all settling a nice deal you're on a dominant team what's it been like yeah, it's kind of surreal, really. I just think like a lot of the views of where I'm at now in Dodger Stadium, it's very nostalgic. Like it reminds me of when I was a kid and I would go to games and then even driving to the field and just like being home in general during season is something I've never experienced. So it's such a like a weird foreign feeling. It's it's like comfortable and it's nostalgic. It like brings me back and it's just it's been amazing. It's been a dream come true. And the organization's awesome. Uh, like the catchers, everything has been perfect you know it's an organization where i know i'll get better at and then i'm at home i get to be by like just awesome weather like kind of i live by the ocean so i get to do all that and it's just kind of like a it just like seems too good to be true right now so it's it's been really really cool what if you had come up with the dodgers what if you had come up in this environment in the sense of like you just had everything exactly how it is now like like you said perfect weather you know everybody's really pushing in the same direction but you played at two organizations that did things completely different before this, and you kind of had to learn. I watched you work back in rehab when we played together with the Rays, and to me, I think sometimes when players come up in organizations that have everything and they get, give you everything, you don't develop that work ethic that I saw you have because it's like, ah, you know, someone else will, you know, they'll, they'll just they'll give me this next thing. Like, what if you had come I- up as a Dodger? I don't know. I think for me personally, like I've always had that like neurotic sense of like, I need to do a lot or things aren't going to work out and I'm going to be homeless. Like I just had a weird, like, especially coming out of high school, I was so like fear of failure driven that like, I think no, it, no matter the information I had, I was like, I need to do everything I possibly can to be in the big league. Cause I have like this crazy fear of like regretting something in my career, like not working hard enough or something like that. I think that could be the case maybe for some people, but also I could see the flip side of being like, it might have calmed down a little bit of that like neurotic, you know what I mean? Because I'm out there just throwing stuff at a wall. Like when stuff's not working, I'm like, I don't know, like six things suck. I don't know how to fix it. I think if maybe there was information to be like, okay, this is why you suck today, or this is why when you are bad, you're consistently doing this. It might have calmed maybe a little bit of that stuff down but i do understand the point you're making I, and i think for some players that probably could be the case but i think it's a matter of knowing yourself and knowing what you need and like what will make you better and i i love the the path that i i got going up and i really like the pirates minor league was awesome it might not have been super advanced into all the analytic stuff but there was a lot of teams that weren't doing that till later and i was i think i did get that work ethic and they were very very specific about like you need to develop a routine and i think a lot of that came from the pirates and i learned a ton from the pirates in like the old school way and then i got to the rays and then got all the analytic stuff down so i kind of had the perfect little upbringing yeah now you got a little bit of both with this group too so that helps yeah um i got one more for you you know we're obviously early on in the regular season here do you have narratives that play in your head for starts so I'll give an example because we use the word stopper a lot. So I'm thinking about mm-hmm. your previous start before the one over the weekend, last weekend against the Mets. They win the first two against L.A., right? I think it had been a wishy-washy week for the ball club. Do you go into that one like, screw it, we're about to show this team, you know, what we're really about. Offense is going to explode. I'm going to try and go eight and strike out double digits. Just like we would say, hey, you're going all out every start, but the playoffs is different. Do you have those sometimes in the regular season? Honestly, for me, like I've, I used to maybe try to 
create a narrative a bit in the minor leagues and it was kind of a trial and error situation i'm not i'm way better if i try to keep things as consistent as i possibly can like a world series game or a spring training start i try to eliminate any type of emotional component to it like i have my routine so nitpicked out minute by minute and like i try to eliminate any sort of thing that can't isn't like actually physically tangible. So like any narrative or any like mental thing I tell myself, I just, I'm like, okay, this is just like a, a thought. This is, none of this is real. So if I just need to find what physically works and try to have the most consistent mentality, every single start and just keep rolling them over one into one into one. And I'm very much like one start to the next, to the next, to the next. And I used to not be that way. And I think I'd find myself being like, okay, if I do this and I have, three good starts, this will happen and that'll happen. And it just caused an unnecessary amount of anxiety. I was painting these like fake stories in my head. So for me personally, I kind of try to keep it as simple as possible and just each start is its own entity. And like day one is this day, that's done. I go to sleep, day two is this day. I go to sleep, day three is this day. It's very, very much, it's kind of a boring answer, but like it's helped me so much the last few years of just keeping it as emotionally consistent as I possibly can day to day to day, like just keeping it like that every start. Understood. Listen, I, I was big into that and I, we had a, we had a young man on, it's a sophomore in high school last week. And he asked us, you know, how do you stay consistent? And I said, you have to find a routine and you have to stick with this mm -hmm. routine because when things go wrong, which in baseball, listen, every time you think you got it figured out, something goes wrong. So, <laughs> You have to have something to fall back on, right, in the routine. So you mentioned the Pirates. Was it the Pirates? Was there a coach that said, hey, listen, Tyler, you got to do this and, and you got to figure this out. But you have to figure out your routine on your, on your own, right? You can't have somebody come up to you and say, hey, this is what you're going to do. It has to be a learning and it evolves over time. But who was it that told you, hey, or, or was it just the organization said, hey, Tyler, you got to have a routine. We got to stick with it. And as you get older and as, as your career progresses, it obviously changes to incorporate your different lifestyle. Yeah, I, it was definitely an organizational message. Like I think they had come up with that obviously internally, but the guy who harped on it the most and I was with him all the time is Justin Message. And he's still there with the Pirates. And I was with him basically every level, or like high A, double A. Like he was with me for a long time and then like the fall league. And he was always very much like you need to develop a routine. Scott Mitchell too is our coordinator and he was always very big onto it. So I think that was the one thing I realized I needed the most just because too, when you're young and you're not experienced, like nerves are obviously a thing for everyone. And I think that I realized quickly, like one way to manage the nerves for me was to have some sort of consistent routine. Like there's so many things out of your control that if you can somehow manage and get like a finger on your routine and understand it, you have some sort of control. Like if you do have any sort of nervous intrusive, it's like, all right, no, I'm prepared. I've done what I need to do. And then the more starts you log, the more confident you get in your routine. And it's always forever changing. Like my routine is even different from what it was last year, but like the staples have always stayed the same. So I would say those two people for sure kind of instilled that in me. And then I like developed it over time. All right. Big finisher here. Cause I forgot we asked for fan questions and got a ton on social. So I'll just mix in two, a lot of questions about interactions with teammates. So I'll give you two. One is, what you're talking to Yamamoto about, because a lot of fans are like, you sit with him, we see you on dugout shots with him, so what are you guys doing, mm -hmm. talking about? And then the other is what Teoscar Hernandez is calling you. What he's calling me? Yeah, they said he has a nickname for you. Did you hear about this? I don't even. No, I don't, I don't know. All right, I got to fact check this. But I'm sure he said I have, a, I have such a bad memory, but I, I'm sure I've heard it, and I'll, I'll do some <laughs> recon today, and I'll be like, what is it? I'm sure it's a thing. But Yamamoto uh, is the man. Like for being a 24-year-old guy, first year in the big leagues, not speaking the language, his confidence is, and it's not like an arrogance. It's very much like he's comfortable in his skin 24-7. Like it's, when I was 24 in the big leagues, I was not. I was terrified all the time. And I was afraid of doing the wrong things or saying the wrong things. And he just has a very like confident aura to him but he's very humble and he's just he's like a, he's like a samurai i guess i don't know if that's racist or not but that's it's what he like he's very consistent and i we talk about everything on the bench like his english is insanely good for the amount of time he's spent here like it gets better every single day and he does english class all the time which is another testament to like how disciplined he is he goes to the field he does all this stuff and then he goes english class like a bunch 
so we talk about everything. We talk about like, how'd you feel during the start? Uh, he'll just like kind of small little sentences and stuff. And I'll ask him like what he does off the field, like how you do. And then we just have normal dugout conversations. Sometimes like, how do you pitch a guy or how'd you feel? Or like, what did this pitch feel like? It's all pretty, pretty standard stuff. And then we, we kind of bullshit, you know, like normal, but he's, he's one of my favorite guys to sit in, sit next to in the, in the dugout for sure. I did find the quote too, Kratz. Sorry. The, a ahead. lot of fans were asking about it and I saw it and I'm like, but you got to always fact check this stuff nowadays. So apparently Teo in an interview said, um, they asked, he is asked about you. He goes, he's like a sex God, big, tall dude, long hair. So there's a lot of people. No, I thought, that. <laughs> I thought it was, Kike said that. Not, was it? Oh, was it Kike? Yeah, I, think it was Kike. I think it was Kike. Yeah. yeah it was Kike. Okay. Oh. They said Hernandez. Yeah, I hear him say that a lot. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's my bad. Last name. I I'm, get it. No, you're good. two Hernandez last names on the team. What's so. the What's yeah. the most recent funny thing or what's the thing that Yamamoto's working on? Because whenever whenever guys, Japanese guys would work on their English, I loved talking to them because they were talking like, like you just play in Toronto. You know, when, when we were playing with in Toronto, he would, he would always talk about like, he would, he's, my back is sore my back is <laughs> and he would like he would talk about it and his locker was right next to mine and so we were sitting there and talking and like he would just use what he was working on from his classes so what's Yamamoto working on it's more like I ask him a lot of questions he's a pretty quiet dude he'll still come up and talk to me like he'll, like if I pitch good he goes good pitch <laughs> I'm like, yeah, thank you, dude. <laughs> and, I'll, and I'll come up and just ask him questions. And for the most part, it's it's my answer is based on when I ask him questions. He, he know he's always his answers are always good in English. Like he understands what I'm saying. Sometimes it's probably difficult for him to get the words, but I know what I'm saying. He's retaining, and he'll like kind of get on and then respond in English. But uh, it's crazy how much better it gets in the short term. I think he's just a really smart dude too. Um, so I think he just learns quickly and he cares a lot. It's like, he's like thoughtful about it, but I'm trying to think something specific that we talked about. I don't know if I think of it, I'll come on here next time and, and do it. I gotta, I gotta like get in. Or bring him on next time. I can't we can, think of and, it. and we can all, we can I'll all hang him. out next time you're on. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'll ask you, him. That'd be cool. Hey, you could have him and Shohei at the same time. We could have, you yeah, know, you could be Good the luck. trans. Yeah. yeah. Tyler, you could be, really you could be yeah, the cl- you could be the translator. <laughs> you could be the translator for all three of them. That'd yeah, be great. I'll brush up all yeah. This this next <laughs> few weeks, I'll get my Japanese going, and I'll maybe I'll learn as fast as Yamamoto, and we can get it going <laughs> on, a, right, so, on the Babel app. That's yeah. right. Yeah, there you go. So the last one before we let you go, because we've had you and it's been awesome. Have you have you thrown the javelin yet? Have you taken the javelin out for a test throw yet? No, but I kind of want to. I don't. I'm not going to in season just because I'm not like you know what I mean. I'm not chanting anything. But <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Fuck all that. I'm. I do think it's kind of it's kind of awesome though watching him do it in his routine. So he's got a guy named Yata Sensei that comes around, and I've done this the routine stuff with him. It's a lot of like diaphragm breathing, and you have like a straw you breathe through while doing these like exercises and a lot of it is physical, but also mental. Like putting yourself in these weird positions while controlling your breath. And it's very specific to baseball. And I've worked with him a few times and I love his program. And that's kind of all uh, Yamamoto does. It's that mixed with a bunch of other stuff, but it's like strength mixed with stretching. And I've watched him from afar. And I think the javelin stuff is really cool because it, it, you're kind of in like this mental place after doing this, the breathing, and then you're basically taking this javelin and trying to throw it to a consistent point every time. So I think it's just like tapping into I don't know, like slowing your thought down enough to get into a, like a routine enough to keep throwing the javelin to a consistent spot. But his workouts are awesome. And like, I do like incorporating some of the stuff. And I think I'm going to try to go to Japan at some point and like go to their like home turf and see what it's all about. I know we're going next year in season, but I kind of want to go in the off season and just like work with them and see what it's all about. Hey, Japan's awesome. But two things, yeah. two, two things real quick. One as a, as a team, has the team shut him down from throwing the javelin? Because like, does it stick in the ground? Because there are certain teams that are real particular about their turf. Mm. So is, are they real? And then second of all, do you have a nickname for him? 
Because I want to call him Nobu, but you know, you keep calling him Yamamoto. So is there a nickname we can? Because Yo, 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 Yoshinobu Yamamoto, Yama. that's like a long one. Yoshi, a, people call you Yoshi. There's a, stu- a bunch of stuff. I just, yeah, I just call him Yamamoto or like whatever. I'll say a bunch of different stuff. But Yoshi, I hear a lot. The javelin, though, it's it's got like a round ball at the end. It's basically weight distributed to feel like a javelin, but there's no like sticky thing. It's just like a, it's almost like a plastic tennis ball. So it's not, there's no like penetration. There you go. Perfect <laughs> yeah. way to end. <laughs> yeah. so, so Thank there you, were no, sex god. There were no anybody hurt, no grass hurt in the throwing of the job. No, no, no. No, the okay. turf is all, it's good. It's not, it's been non-penetrated. No, there those you Dodger, go. Hey, listen, those Dodger Stadium people, man, they're like out there with scissors cutting the grass. I get it. That, I mean, that, it's pro- you got to think too about how hard it is to maintain a field in California with the conditions. And like, I wouldn't want a big old job and going through it either, but he's, it's he's covered. It's just the ball. It's bouncing. Yeah, it's bouncing. It's yeah, just yeah. The ball. yeah, yeah, yeah. Tyler, you're the man. This was awesome. Great to have you on. Looking forward to have you on throughout the season. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay. All right, sweet guys. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long. So do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball the way it should be covered.